Hey, how's it going guys? I'm excited to at long last be finally taking a look once again at a minimum factory kit. So this is the line from Max Factory, their 120 scale kits here. These are 120 scale plastic kits of different anime characters and things like that. This particular one being Musashi from Kanta Collection, it's one of the bigger ones and the reason why I resurrected this out of the backlog is because I wanted to let you guys know in case you were unaware that USA Gundam Store actually carries these minimum factory kits so if you're interested in them you should check out their website. The link as always will be down below. And of course you can use my coupon code ZAKUARELEASE10 on these and everything else there on their site of course. So they are having the reissue of Musashi that's coming out soon. That's gonna feature like a few new parts but it's mostly kind of the same thing as this. So this is the original one not the reissue but so yeah if you guys are interested in this line I would highly recommend you check them out. They can be a little bit expensive but they're really fun and really cool to put together. So a big thank you to Isaac Gunham Store as always for their support and again yeah if you guys like what you see here with this kit or want to check out the other ones that they have there available on their site then check the link down below. Alright so cool box art here on the front of Musashi there. The box art for these is always kind of a similar style and on this top and bottom you just got the Minimum Factory logo there. On this side again just kind of the same thing Minimum Factory 120 scale Kankole Musashi there same thing but on the back we've got a little bit more to look at here got the full illustration there without being kind of blocked by the title on the front and over here you can see what the model kit is going to look like just straight out of the box unpainted that would be there in the back so this front one here this is what the model kit looks like all painted up like how it's supposed to look like i guess professionally painted and then there in the background you can see how it's going to look unpainted so just straight out of the box so you can see it's missing like some color apps and little small little things like the buckle there on the belt things like that obviously not every Every single little detail is going to be recreated, but actually, if, I mean, if you look at it, the color separation just straight out of the box is going to be pretty good. Now, these definitely will require some glue as well. You can see my box is a little bit dusty. So these are not like your simple Bandai snap together HG kits. They're small, you know, 120 scales is pretty small. It's not as small as it gets, but they're pretty small. You have a lot of little tiny parts and you will need to do some gluing and it's probably a good idea to do some painting as well. So you just got your tray of parts here. So we've got a good amount of them, a lot more than the last time we reviewed one of these kits, which was the Allier kit. That one really only had a couple runners. This one has quite a bit more, hence the larger size box. And just like with the Allier, you get a big poster here. So it's a big fold out poster here of the same illustration from the front of the box so that's cool you can stick that up on your wall or whatever on the back you have some instructions so here's the parts list and order you can see all of that stuff there we are going to have some water side decals included as well for a couple markings and for her eyes mostly and then you've got just the construction here so it's just going through all of that and as you can see, the part separation on it is really quite nice. If you want to paint it like that, if you don't want to save yourself from doing a lot of masking, it uh, should be pretty easy to paint. Obviously, again, you will have to paint in some of the smaller little details and things, but you can also see where the eye decals and this other decal is gonna go there on the front of that neck piece there and just kind of the overall look of that. You've got just a couple of nice big reference photos here to refer to for when you're painting it. You can see the photos nice and clear there. Got this other bit here. I think this is just a advertisement. What's this? Oh, okay, no, this is just a continuation. They couldn't fit everything into this one manual here, which is the poster. So instead of making the poster larger, they just gave us a second part of the manual. So the second part is basically just the uh, the backpack part of that, like the actual like ship part of that. So this is just going through all the construction of that. You can see it shows you some areas where you're going to want to glue there. You're probably going to want to use even more glue than what is even recommended in here. So just need to have that on hand. So this is just the construction of that backpack part and then you'll use the other she as well. On here you can see next to Musashi is the other figure that they released in the line from uh, Kanta Collection is the Yamato figure there with her umbrella and everything. So don't have that one, but who knows, possibly maybe we'll get that someday in the future, but let's take a look. Let's just run through all the runners here. All right, so here you have the water slide decal sheet for this. You can see you've got six sets of the eyes just in case you mess up. You got plenty of spares and then four of the little gold flower there for her neck and then the Musashi logo there basically for the base, I guess. 
Now, as you guys know, I normally run through the runners in alphabetical order, but we're just going to go through these. Basically, the point is I just want to show you guys the how the parts look and how the how detailed they are and everything. So here we have runner C, which is a red runner there. You can see some parts for her shoes and skirt parts. Runner I is in this kind of gray-green color here, some parts for the kind of whole parts of the ship. Runner F as well in that same color here. You can see just some more smaller little detail parts. Runner G is an example of some of the weird runners you have with this. You just have these runners with this really huge area around there and then the part just like inside there so a bunch of empty space it looks strange but for whatever reason i'm sure there's a good reason for that that's just how the, some of these runners are molded we got runner k here for the cannons or turrets i'm not sure the correct verbiage for that but we've got three of this k runner runner j a couple more red parts there for the bottoms of the ships runner d is in this really dark navy blue color for a few more parts there it looks like clothing parts mostly runner h is back to that light gray green for a few more parts of the ship and backpack stuff runner a is going to be our skin tone parts for this you have this very tanned skin tone for her Runner M once again in that very dark navy, almost black color here, basically parts for the base and some internal parts there for the backpack it looks like. Some kind of like uh, mold release or something on that, oil or something on that. Runner L is a few more of these little tiny guns that are going to go on there, you've got two of those. Runner B basically looks to be all the parts for the hair in this off-white kind of slightly cream color. And then runner E is just straight up white for some more little detailed parts are on there. So there is what you're going to get just straight out of the box, a good mess of runners, some water slide decals, and your instruction manual which doubles as a nice poster. So all in all, not bad. Let's see how it looks once you get it all put together. All right, so it took a while, but here's how she's gonna look just built up straight out of the box with just a bunch of sanding You'll notice that a lot of it is sanded. We'll take a look around this here And I gotta say it took a while to get this all just you know get all the parts cleaned up really nicely Because when you're working in a really small scale like this You got to make sure everything is cleaned up really good because any other any little detail of some nub that's not sanded really nicely or any just like mold line uh, anything like that is just going to it's gonna show more when you're in this smaller scale so you gotta clean up everything really good so it took me quite a while it took me probably just as long to just get this to this state as it would for me to build up like a, a big master grade kit essentially so it takes a while and this thing is small it's in 120 scale so it's not very big but it looks really really cool I gotta say this I can't wait to get this kit to paint it up it's gonna be really nice but yeah it was a good amount of work but everything fit together pretty well there's a couple little seam lines mostly on like the ship parts uh, the body itself doesn't really have much in the way of seam lines I had to do a little bit of refining on just, just like some of the details some of the little finer details the fitting around like on like the breast parts especially uh, didn't really well they fit together fine but then like when I put the arms on like the arms didn't fit around there like just quite right it just didn't look quite right so I had to do a little bit of a little bit of extra little sanding a little bit of reshaping on some of those parts and then like for the bandages the bandages aren't all molded in this in the in the white color so you see like on the legs uh, especially you have just a, a couple white parts on there uh, but then you'll basically just have to have paint in the rest of them. So you have the bandage details molded in there, but you'll have to actually uh, go in and just paint those in yourself. Obviously, if you're painting the whole thing, that'll just kind of come along with that. And so some of the details, like the finer details of just like some little lines here and there, I just kind of went over some of those, especially after like sanding away the, I was just like gently sanding away the mold lines on some of those kits. The mold lines also run through some of this very tiny little details on there so I had to kind of go through with my knife and just kind of uh, rework some of those little fine little detail lines again just to kind of make sure that those are nice and pronounced for when it's painted I'll be able to paint it up nicely so yeah it's a pretty cool kit all right so I just want to take a look at a couple things here and show you some of the details first of all the back half of this is supposed to connect into the back of here and it sort of does but the way that mine just doesn't want to seem to stay like that so later on uh, when it's all said and done I'll glue that in so it's actually stuck there but for my for now mine just keeps popping out I think just because maybe the angle that I ended up gluing the leg in or something is just a little bit too far forward or something like that so whatever for whatever reason doesn't want to stay in there but anyway let's take this off so I can show you guys some of the detail of this so the main halves will kind of fold out to the side there these large turrets at the top can be 
rotate it, you can change the angle there. Then each of these three barrels is individually articulated. And then these little turrets, these ones can also be rotated like that. And these aren't individually articulated, but these are just, those will just move together like that. So we've got one, two, three, four of those. And this thing is all on the top of this peg here, which is actually a ball joint there at the top. So this can actually move around a little bit, but it's basically just to like give you a good range for where that's gonna plug into the back of the body. As for the body itself, this cannon over here on the side can also be rotated if you wanted to have that more pointing to the front. It's just the same like the ones on the back, so the, those uh, barrels will also be individually articulated like so. This all went together pretty good. It just took a while to get everything all put together. And so you, yeah, again, you're seeing it, you know, with a bunch of sanding and gluing all on there. So the surface is looking maybe a little bit odd at the moment, but it's just all in the in the works of getting it all prepped for, for painting anyway. And I haven't put on the eye decals, of course, just because it's not painted yet. But you do also have this part here, which is a part for the glasses. So if you wanted to put the actual glasses on there, you could put those on. It's just this little white part you just like stick there on the face underneath the hair. I'm opting for no glasses for mine, but I just wanted to let you guys know that you do have that option part for her glasses as she is sort of meant to have glasses, I suppose. Or she has glasses on the front of the box cart, the box uh, art anyway. So yeah, there you go. That is pretty much it. Last thing then, I just want to give you guys a little size comparison so you can see just how small or large this is. And here she is compared with your standard HD144 scale Gundam. So you can see there is a lot of detail and a lot of part separation in a very small space there. So it looks really cool. I really like this a lot. And yeah, it's they can be expensive, around 50 bucks for this. So you might think, oh, that's kind of a lot. But if you remember what I said, if you're counting that in terms of the time that it takes to build, and like I say, this took me about the same amount of time as it takes for like a complex master grade just to get it to this point now. So considering that most master grades cost around the same amount, that seems right about right. So I think it, it, it makes sense. You got a lot of detail in there. And this is kind of definitely a thing that's meant to, you know, you're meant to spend a lot of time on this so if you're talking bang for your buck in terms of time well spent enjoying building up a model then i think the price tag for these is worth it so if you guys have further questions or comments about these feel free to leave you know those down below if you'd like to see more just kind of reviews like this of some of the other kits in the line i do have a bunch more uh, i'm just kind of waiting to build them for when i actually have a reason to build them a, a sort of kit in mind or some sort of paint scheme, something in mind to actually use them. But if you'd like to see just more reviews like this, then just let me know. I can try to work some more of these just in between some of the other Gunpla and everything else. So thank you all so much for watching. And again, big thank you to us at Gundam Store for sponsoring the review. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.